you think was there? Yes? A buffalo, yeah? Yes? Oh, yes, yeah, he got there early. Yeah, yeah. Yes? Say it. Say it. Say it. Coyote, yeah. Yes? Oh, the crocodile, he was right on the water's edge. He looked like a log with the crocodile. Yes? Oh, the elephant was there. Yes? Oh, yeah, the ox was there. Oh, my God. Yeah, yes? The fox was there. Yes, the did. The oh, the flamingo came all the way from South America, he did. Yes? The shark was there. Yes? Oh, who was there? Yes? The rabbit, he hopped over. Yes? Say it. Zebra was there with his many stripes. Yes? Oh, the giraffe. He was so tall, he was way in the back. He was there. Yes? The whale was there. The whale was there. Yes? Skunk. Oh, yeah, the skunk was sitting all by himself. Yes? The brown bear was there. So all the animals were there, right? Ooh, ooh, ooh. The turtle was there. And he was the turtle was there, and he was so kind, he gave the snail a ride on its back, and the snail said, Whee! <laughs> so, all the animals were there, and they all started talking about this problem of darkness, and what should be done about it, and blah, 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 blah. And uh, somebody said something about, about light being the opposite of dark. Maybe a little light would help the matter and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and finally, the bear stood up. Now, you know bears like to sleep, right? And, and, and then you would, and then, so you would assume that bears like it when it's dark, right? And you'd be correct. And the bear stood up. He was one of the larger animals, and he was the most ferocious of the animals. And he, he wanted to speak last because what he thought he thought what he had, would have would have to what he would have to say would weigh the most. And he was sort of like a bully. And the bear stood up, walked into the center of that circle, and said, "We must have darkness. We must have darkness." And as far as the bear was concerned. That was it, end of conversation, everybody go home. And the bear started to walk out of that circle. And a little voice, way in the back, behind the zebra, behind the giraffe, because the giraffe was so tall he was in the back. Well, behind the giraffe, the little voice said, Let there be light. <laughs> Somebody spoke after he spoke. The man walked back into the center of the circle and said, We must have darkness. We must have darkness. He started to walk out of that circle once again, and the little voice way in the back said, Let there be Oh, 
flamingo. And he said, we must have darkness. We must have darkness. And that voice in the back said, The bear looked at the squirrel, wasn't the squirrel. And he said, we must have darkness. We must have darkness. And the birds up in the tree, the hawk, the owl, the raven, the blue jay, the condor, they saw it first along with the giraffe, because he's so tall, at the horizon, where the earth meets the sky, like a curtain rising up like this. The colors started to change. It became a purple, like your shirt. That became an amber, like yours. And, and the birds up in the tree, they saw it, and the giraffe saw it, and they said, The light is coming, the light is coming. And the bear saw it, and the bear said, We must have darkness, we must have darkness. And they said, The light is coming, the, we must have darkness, we must have darkness. And that voice in the back said, The bear started to walk through that gathering of animals. He pushed aside the dog. Take over the cow. <laughs> Move the elephant. Look at the monkey. Was it the monkey? <laughs> and then you heard. Let there be light. <laughs> and as that light started to spread across the gathering of animals, the bear could see the creature that was calling forth the light. It was the smallest of the creatures. Isn't it always the way? It was the ship bump. The ship bump was walking backwards, saying, and the bear said, we must have thought, and the ship bump said, and the ship bump in the bear's eyes, and he knew the bear was full of anger. And the chipmunk thought it would be best for her to skedaddle. And the chipmunk turned and started to run toward the safety of its home and the stone walls where it lives till this day. And the chipmunk ran. The bear gave chase. Now you might think, because a bear is big, and burly, that he moves slowly. What? Not this bear. This bear moved like the wind. He ran through the clearing, pushing aside the horse, stepping over the porcupine, pushing aside the flamingo, chasing after the chipmunk, who is running to the safety of its home in the stone walls where it lives till this day. As the chipmunk ran, the bear jumped into the air, reached out with its mighty claws, and came down on the back of the chipmunk. But the chipmunk squeezed and squirmed and dug and squeezed and squirmed and dug and squeezed and squirmed and dug and escaped into the safety of its home in the stone walls where it lives till this day. And light spread across the earth. And ever since that day, we have light. And ever since that day, whenever you see a chipmunk scurry across your decks, run across the playground, hang out under the bird feeder, you see those markings on the chipmunk's back? They're placed there by the bear. And they're there to remind us that it was the littlest ones that said.
parents and our teachers uh, talk to us about sometimes and often about bullying and being nice to one another. And I remember when I was about your age, I came home from school one day. I, I was feeling kind of blue. I don't know why. But my mom picked up. I don't know how moms are, right? They pick up on things. My mom picked up. I know what she said to me. I bet you your mom and dad said this to you. Your grandparents probably said this to you. My mom said to me that day, she said, sticks and stones will break your bones, but words will never hurt. That's what my mom said too, you know? And I said, okay, mom, I felt a little better about that. Sticks and stones break your bones and they never I said, okay, I felt a little better about that. But then you know what? I got a little older and I realized that my mom was right. Sticks and stones will break your bones. But you know what? Bones heal. And bruises, they go away after an hour, even less. You don't even feel that bruise anymore. But hurtful words and unkind words, they go right in the air and they hurt for a lot longer than a broken bone or a bruise. They're for a long time. And that's why our parents and our teachers say, uh-uh, don't tease. Don't make fun of people, because you don't know what their struggles are. You don't know what they have to deal with, so be nice to people. So I was reading this poem about this fellow, this fellow wrote, his name is Shel Silverstein. Maybe some of you know him. He wrote that book, Where the Sidewalk. Yeah. And then he wrote that other book called The Light in the Attic. And then he wrote that other book called Falling Up. And then he wrote that sweet book called The Giving. Yeah. Well, he wrote this poem, right? I love this poem. I'd like you to repeat after me, okay? I will not play at tug of war. I will not play at tug of war. I'd rather play at hug of war. I'd rather play at hug of war. Where everyone hugs instead of tugs. after me and do what I do. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just testing, just testing. Just testing, just testing. <laughs> this is my head. This is my head. It's a place where my body gets fed. It's a place where my body gets fed. If I start at the mouth, if I start at the mouth, and the food travels south, and the food travels south, it's body fed, it's my head. It's body fed, it's my head. These are my feet. These are my feet. They're the place where my body meets the street. They're the place where my body meets the street. They're the hardest part to see. They're the hardest part to see. Because they're at the end of me. Because they're at the end of me. They're the things at the bottom of the sheets. They're the things at the bottom of the sheets. They're my feet. They're my feet. These are my hands. These are my hands. They're the place where my body meets a friend. They're the place where my body meets a friend. Give me five on the top. Give me five on the top. Give me five in the hole. Give me five in the hole. Baby, baby, we got soul. Baby, baby, we got soul. They're the place where my body meets a friend. They're the place where my body meets a friend. They're my hands. They're my hands. Ain't I grand? Ain't I grand? With my head. With my head. And my feet. And my feet. And my hands. And my hands. Ain't I grand? Ain't I grand?
that's the nursery rhyme this mommy would do with her daughter. Each day they do two, three, four, five, six nursery rhymes. Because they both knew it was very, very important to read nursery rhymes aloud. And they had so much fun doing it every day. Oh, let me tell you about them. They lived in this nice little house. They had a garden. Woo! What a garden they had. In that garden, they had vegetables upon vegetables. They had some vegetables that grew above the ground like this. Then they had other vegetables that grew below the ground like that. What kind of vegetables do you think grew in that garden? Apple! Oh, they had some apple. Oh, wait, wait, before you ask you that, put your hands one second. Let me tell you a little bit more about them. They had this garden, right? And they had a fence all around the garden. And then there was a field. And then it was the woods. And no one. <coughs> <coughs> Absolutely no one ever ventured into the woods because the gunny wolf lived in the woods. So one day the mother said to the little girl, Listen, honey, after we go to the market and sell all these vegetables that we've been growing all summer, I can't take you with me because the market's far away. You'll have to stay home by yourself. You'll be all right. Just whatever you do. Don't go out of the yard. And don't go into the woods. Because the gunny wolf lives in the woods. Mommy, you don't have to keep talking about the gunny wolf, okay? I know about the gunny wolf, all right? I know you, I just wanted to remind you. You don't have to remind me, Mommy. I'm a big girl. I just had a birthday and everything. <laughs> okay, okay, don't get so upset. Yes, Mom. So the little girl went to get a bushel basket, and she and her mother went out into the garden and they started picking vegetables. What kind of vegetables do you think they picked? Carrots. Oh, they go under the ground, go for your eyes and your skin. Yes. Tomato. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and tomato. Yes. Peppers are red and the green. Yes. Oh, yeah, something nice and heavy for the mother to carry. Yes. Strawberries, yes. What did you say? Had some apples, yeah. Say it. Oh, oh yeah, that's so sweet they go under the ground. Yes. Carrots, oh yeah, yes. Yeah, had some fruit, yes. What goes into a salad? Think about it, yeah. Say it. Say it. Celery, between the teeth. Yes. Say it. Peas that make you pretty. I know. Yeah. Say it. Oh, have some orange. Yeah. Tomato. Ooh, tomatoes. Yes. Yes. Say it. Yes. What kind of vegetables? Say it. Berries. Berries. Have some. Yes. Yeah. Hey, wait. Hey, wait. Put your hands on one second. Let's see. Let's see how well your teachers know their vegetables. Shh, don't help them. It's a big test. No teachers left behind. Don't help them. What kind of vegetables do you think they picked? Oh, lots of iron and broccoli. Oh, my favorite. I love cucumbers. Corn, they had some sweet corn. <coughs> I mean, they're so sweet they come under the ground. Carrots are for the eyes and your skin. Oh, Carl Sandberg's got it. <laughs> you can't turn them down. Hey, they're doing well. What kind of vegetables? Brussels sprouts. Zoo oh, I love zucchini. Oh, you all oh, summer squash. Ah, oh, summer, summer squash is summer not. <laughs> Oh, butternut squash. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My favorite. I love cucumbers. Hey, they did well. It's an Oprah. Not to choke you. The mother lift up the bushel basket and said, Now, listen, honey. I'm going to the market. I'll be going all day. I can't take you with me because the market's far away. You have to stay home by yourself. You'll be all right. Whatever you do, don't go out of the yard. And don't go into the woods because, don't say it, mommy, 
Oh, I said that about the gummy worm. I about the gummy worm. You said it twice, mommy. <laughs> well, the opening day walked out, the opening day walked down the path. The little girl, watch your mother walk down the path. And she said, I love my mommy so much. I do. I do. <laughs> she works so hard. She does. She's so strong, man. She is. She's always buying me things. <laughs> she bought me new sneakers. <laughs> she did. I know what we do. I'm going to pick some flowers for her so that when she comes back home, I'll give her a nice bouquet of flowers and she'll know that I love her because I do. As soon as her mother was out of sight, the little girl went out into the yard. She saw a beautiful pink flower. She said, this is great. My mom loves pink flowers. She picked that beautiful pink flower. Then she saw a white flower. She said, that beautiful white flower. Oh my goodness. Oh, she saw a pink one. She that pink flower. She saw a yellow one. She that yellow one. And then she saw a white one. And then she saw a green flower. She that green flower. Then she looked. So a beautiful blue flower, but it's on the other side of the gate. I know I told my mother I wouldn't go out in the yard, but I just want to get that blue flower and I come right back. No biggie. I'm not afraid of any gun with anyway. No, I'm not. I'm, gonna just, I'm, I'm not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go boom, boom. I'll be back in a flash. No problem. Little girl, open the gate. <coughs> and she ran. Started to run, and when she ran, it sounded like this. Oh. 
up into a nice big soft chair. She cuddled up and fell asleep. Now the gunny wolf woke up, looked around and said, my gosh, I'm almost outside the forest. I better go deep into the forest where I'm the safest. And he looked on the ground. And what do you think he saw on the ground all around? <laughs> he saw foot footprints, yeah. But what else do you think he saw? Flowers. Flowers. The little girl that dropped the flowers. And the gunny wolf said, I think I'll take these flowers home to my wife. Because the wolf has a wife in the woods too. <laughs> he picked those flowers up. And he started walking home. Do you know what song he sang as he walked home? <laughs> That's the story of the little girl and the... Wait a minute. 
What do you think? Do you think the little girl told her mother what? 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 Yeah, of course we do. Sometimes they say, <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Good, yeah, stand up. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, what size of a great day? Yeah. Go ahead. What happened to the bear? Well, he, uh, he, he got a little depressed, and he, he slept a lot, he slept all winter. And they still, you know, the happen to sleep all winter now. That's it. You know, but he's not a bully as much as he was back then. He kind of learned his lesson. Yeah. What happened to Chipmunk? Oh, he, his back healed up. He's cool now. And actually, here in the bed, they said that they get along. Yeah. 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 What happened to the squirrel? He's out there looking around for nuts. Yeah. You know something? Let me tell you something. Next time you see, this is a little science project, okay, everybody? Then I'll let you go. Turn this way. My friend asked me about the squirrel. Now that the leaves are off the trees, right? You can see a lot of squirrel nests up in the trees. Next time, if you have a squirrel nest up in a tree in your backyard or near you, take a stick, right? A kind of thick stick. Go over to the tree and tap on the tree like this. Just tap on the tree like that a few times. And if, the, if the squirrel was in the nest, he'll look over to see who's knocking. He will. He tried that out. Little science project. Thank you all, everybody.